This is Lusaka, the capital of Zambia. Can you spot the pit latrines? Yes, you are correct. They are here. In 2019, the University of Zambia, Sundec, and GIZ, together with the Lusaka Water and Sewerage Corporation and Lusaka City Council, conducted a comprehensive citywide campaign to determine quantities and qualities of fecal sludge in the city of Lusaka. In this module, I will use Lusaka as a case study to show you how to implement the methodology from the Methods for Fecal Sludge Analysis book. So let's follow the steps of the Q&Q methodology, shall we? This figure shows the order of steps as presented in the book chapter. As always, step one is to define the study objective. For example, in Lusaka, the objective was to estimate the total quantities and qualities of fecal sludge that are accumulating within the defined city boundaries of Lusaka. The quantities and qualities that we focused on were pH, electrical conductivity, total solids, volatile solids, chemical oxygen demand, and fecal sludge accumulation rate, because these are all important parameters for treatment. The next step is checking if there is an SFD available in your chosen location, or conducting one if there isn't. The aim of this step is to gain a thorough understanding of the location that you are working in. In Lusaka, an SFD and a good understanding of the sanitation situation in the city by the project partners were available. All that existing knowledge was used in making the sampling plan in the next step. At this point, also evaluate what demographic, environmental and technical information is available. Debt, for short. This table shows some examples of possible debt data. In some places, that might be a lot. In other places, only the bare minimum. The required debt data that is not available will be collected with a questionnaire. The amount of collected data will depend on the study objective and available resources. But based on our experience, we recommend to at least collect information on categories of containment type, toilet type, type of establishment, so for example, residential versus commercial, whether there is a water connection on the premises, time since last emptying event, and number of users. The next step is then designing a sampling plan to collect data on quantities, qualities, and debt data. In order to capture the real distribution of these factors, a random sampling plan was developed. We divided the city in quadrants, and for residential locations took a random, predefined sample in each quadrant. And in dense quadrants, we took two. It is also important to include non-residential establishments, which in some locations contributes a significant volume of fecal sludge. In Lusaka, we defined a target number of samples per commercial category and selected locations across the city to sample. In Lusaka, we took samples in situ from on-site sanitation containments to measure qualities in the laboratory at the university. Samples were taken with a pit sampler or a core sampler. In addition, we conducted a questionnaire. Quantities were measured with a vol laser device, and accumulation rates were then calculated using debt data from the questionnaire. Data analysis can be conducted in any data analysis program. First check if the data is normally distributed. If not, analysis methods appropriate for non-normal data should be used in the data analysis. For example, the median instead of mean. Then, visually inspect for each parameter if there are categories of debt data that are different. This is most easily done using box plots, as I will show in the next slide. If needed, non-parametric statistical tests could help to confirm differences more certainly. This is an example of what data analysis could look like. In the box plot, 
you see the median, 25th, and 75th chordals. The notches around the median are the confidence interval. If the notches don't overlap, meaning this part does not overlap with this part, the categories are significantly different. As you can see, in Lusaka, there were significant differences in total solids concentration between septic tanks and pit latrines, but not between types of pit latrines. In addition, we found that pit latrines and septic tanks were different also between household and commercial establishments. In the last step, the data collected by category can now be used to make weighted averages. Collecting information on quantities and qualities together allows for estimating loadings, as done in this hypothetical example. It is important to note that this is meant as an iterative approach, and not every situation might have capacity to do a large study. It is possible to start with a small amount of samples and build from there, or focus on fewer parameters or a smaller area. You now know how to implement a Q&Q study step by step. The most important takeaways to remember are to create a sampling plan according to local existing knowledge and available demographic, environmental and technical data. In the data analysis, identify categories that are different from each other in order to make a representative weighted average. Lastly, it is an iterative approach. So it is possible to start smaller and with fewer resources and expand as needed. If you want to see more examples of different types of data collection and analysis, the reading list provides multiple examples from India, Uganda, Vietnam and more.